The First Christmas The Nativity Each and every year, we come back to this scene. We set up the pieces, we read the story. It's a routine. It's what we do. And each year, it's a struggle to truly remember, to truly grasp, to truly reflect and abide in the profound nature of this scene. This picture, the nativity, isn't normal. There's a reason we set up a snapshot of this Christmas and not any other. It's unique. It's abnormal. It's supernatural. What other Christmas takes place in a stable? What other Christmas prominently features donkeys, cows, sheep, other barnyard animals? What other Christmas caused shepherds to come running from their hills? What other Christmas brought wise men from their faraway lands? What other Christmas was heralded by angels in dreams and in skies? What other Christmas saw a young man stay faithful to a supernaturally pregnant fiance? What other Christmas observed a virgin girl give birth to a Messiah? What other Christmas ordained a manger as a resting place for a babe? What other Christmas gave us God come down as a human to save us all. Only this Christmas. That's why we put up the nativity set, to remember this Christmas, because it truly was a Christmas like no other. Welcome to Faith Fellowship Baptist Church's Christmas Eve service, and uh, we're glad that you're here as we look back on a Christmas like no other, and truly this year we're coming to you in a Christmas Eve service like no other uh, in many, many ways. Due obviously to the restrictions on gathering sizes, we are just posting this service on YouTube and uh, we hope that you're able to find it instead of gathering together on Christmas Eve, as is our custom. Uh, we hope that putting this online hasn't stopped you from putting on your favorite Christmas tie or Christmas sweater uh, or Christmas dress or Christmas outfit or whatever it is you like to wear on Christmas Eve. Um, we hope that you are still able to enjoy that and uh, enjoy this time together. Maybe grab a cup of eggnog or whatever you would like and uh, join us tonight. Of course, the service will feel a little bit different, uh, but I want to give you a bit of a roadmap of how we're going to go through this. And uh, then we'll start out and you'll know what to expect. We've been blessed by many of the musicians in our church coming in and uh, recording songs for this evening. So we want to give a big thank you uh, to those who recorded something, who came in, or who sent something in, or whatever it was. And uh, we know that you're going to be blessed, uh, as we have been, as we've listened to them being recorded and put together and stuff. A lot of this evening is going to be just listening to those performances. And uh, we have a number of songs we're really excited about. So part of our message to you this evening, then, is just that music. Uh, we want to let you enjoy the music, but also we encourage you to dwell on the, the words, to dwell on the themes of the music as you listen, and uh, let them speak to your heart as well. These old songs uh, have grown famous for a reason. Most of them have just wonderful lyrics for us uh, that we can read. And so let those lyrics that are up on the screen for most or all of the songs this evening uh, speak to your heart. Let the words speak to your heart. And uh, that's part of our Christmas message for you, is the reflections in those old songs, the new songs that we love. 
And just as a quick uh, housekeeping note, uh, we actually had more songs recorded than we could fit tonight, uh, unless we wanted this service to be quite long. And so we've taken the extra songs. Uh, Each group that recorded a song will have a song tonight. And uh, if you recorded just one, it'll be here. But some groups recorded two or three or as many as like six songs. And so those extra songs uh, were actually going to put together a Christmas morning music service. And so tomorrow morning, Christmas morning, if you come onto YouTube again, you'll find the Christmas morning music service, which will just be a a short, uh, short short-ish service with all the extra songs. It won't be fancy. The lyrics won't be on the screen for that one, but it'll just be some music that you can come and listen to and enjoy if you choose to on Christmas morning. A little extra blessing uh, from our musicians here at the church. So if you enjoyed this evening, be sure to check that out tomorrow morning. For tonight, uh, in between the songs that we're playing, uh, we're going to be looking at just one verse of Scripture. And we're going to go phrase by phrase and go through this verse as it helps uh, us understand Christmas and as it relates truths to us that make sense of what happened at Bethlehem and tell us, again, why this Christmas in Bethlehem was like no other Christmas. So tonight, hopefully, you'll, you'll actually see some familiar faces as we go through the service. You'll hear some familiar songs. Uh, we pray that you'll be impacted by some familiar truths from God's word. And so we're hoping that though we are separated and you're sitting on your own couch or chair at home and uh, it just feels a little different, they're still hoping that there will be some familiarity to those of us who are from the church here anyways. And if you're a, a visitor, quote unquote, with us today, if, if this is your first time tuning into Faith Fellowship Baptist Church, uh, we welcome you here. And we do hope that you've helped that you're able to find some hope and some love and some joy and some peace uh, as you view our service this evening. So I want to start us off in prayer, and then we'll uh, hop into the first musical performance that we have for you this evening. Let's pray. Father God, I want to thank you for this evening and for this season. Ultimately, though this Christmas service is like no other that we've ever experienced, we realize that we're looking back at a Christmas that was like no other when you came down to earth as a baby. We pray that you would speak to our hearts this evening with truth from your word and with truth from excellent songs and musicianship, and that each one of us would find this Christmas to be one full of joy, full of hope, full of peace, full of love, even if it looks like no other Christmas we've ever had before. For we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
there you go, a little taste of the music that is to come. We have many more songs on the way. The verse that we're going to look at tonight, phrase by phrase, is, is possibly the most famous verse in all of the Bible. It's John 3.16. We're going to reflect on Christmas in light of the truth in this verse as we take it phrase by phrase. So we start with the phrase, for God. Christmas begins with God. In fact, if you read the Bible, everything begins with God. Genesis 1.1 says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the Bible describes God as eternal, as holy, as unchanging, as infinite, as loving, as omnipotent or all-powerful, as omnipresent, as all-present, as omniscient, all-knowing, God is righteous, God is sovereign, God is true, and God is united. All of these things are what scripture describes for us who God is. And so we need to understand who God is as we go through Christmas because the reality of God is actually necessary for Christmas to happen. For true Christmas, anyways. Without God, there would have been no sovereign ordaining of all the things, and the nativity scene would never have come together. That first Christmas would never have happened by random chance in a chaotic universe. It only occurred because of a divine hand guiding events. All Christmases ultimately have happened because God orchestrated the very first one. And so this phrase, for God, is what starts off our reflection on Christmas this evening. From God's heaven to a manger, from great riches to the poor, came the Holy Son of God, a little child. God so loved the world. There's our second phrase from John 3.16. For God so loved the world. And this statement honestly is remarkable. We talked about how God is a holy God. 
And yet he loves a sinful world. Uh, We looked at those attributes of God, who God is. Uh, In every way, we can say mankind is the opposite. God is eternal. Mankind is just a breath. God is holy. Mankind is sinful. God is unchanging. Mankind is ever-changing. God is infinite. We are finite. God is loving. We are wicked. God is omnipotent, omnipresent, and omniscient. We are very limited in power, in presence, and in knowledge. God is righteous. We are continually evil. God is sovereign. We have no ultimate control. God is true. We are false. God is united. We are fractured. This is the world that we live in, rebellious towards God, full of sinful desires and actions. We can look around at the world and see this pretty clearly in our day and age. It hasn't changed since Jesus came, but that's the world which makes Christmas and this statement all the more surprising and wonderful. God so loved the world, God loves his creation. And that's an, a remarkable thing, a, re, a creation that has rebelled against him, a creation that has uh, gone astray, a creation that doesn't love him back and doesn't acknowledge him as a whole. God still loves the world. And the reality, though, is that God doesn't just love the world as it is. He loves the world enough not to leave it where it is. Hence, Christmas.
For God so loved the world that he sent. These three words are significant because they show us a God who is not a passive God. God is not sitting, having created everything, having watched mankind fall from him, uh, having even been moved in love towards his creation. Now we see that God is not just sitting there doing nothing, but that he is active, that he is stepping into what is going on in the world. Sent is an active word, and it's obviously key to Christmas and key to our salvation. God acts. God is there, he loves the world, and he's moved into action. That's what Christmas shows us. Ultimately, the the first part of the Bible, the Old Testament, shows us God was never passive. God actively creates the world. He speaks, and it was. And then God actively interacts with Adam and with Eve, with their children, and so on. We see him sending prophets. We see him sending messengers. We see him sending kings. We see him sending judges to his people. We see him sending his word to his people, giving them scripture, giving them the law of God so that they might know how to live with him. We see his mighty acts bringing Israel out of Egypt, if you read the book of Exodus. Uh, We see his might in the book of Joshua as he conquers the land. We see over and over an active God, not a passive one, one who is involved in the world, one who didn't just abandon it once it abandoned him. Ultimately, the whole story of the Bible is a story of God stepping into human life in order to redeem us, to bring us back to himself. His action, his sending, his redeeming actions, they're all incredible, wonderful truths of Scripture, and specifically, Christmas. God sent. He didn't leave us as we were. He didn't just abandon us again He sent the Bible to a needy world, and now he sends his word, Jesus, to a needy world who wouldn't find their way without it. He gives us a path. He gives us a light. He sends us Christmas. This wonderful, unique day reminds us of God's active nature in the world. Without it, there wouldn't be a Christmas. We have been enjoying some wonderful church family Christmas music so far, haven't we? And there's more to come. Thanks to each and every one who was willing and able to participate in making this Christmas Eve service a Christmas Eve service like no other. We're looking forward to the rest of the Christmas message as Pastor Daniel continues to work his way through John 3.16, uh, telling us of each different phrase in that verse and the significance of it. And we're anticipating a wonderful church family Christmas greeting time at the end of the service. And again, thanks for those who are able to send in your greetings to the church family. We've also included part of our church missionary family as some of them also responded and were able to send us a greeting. I hope you'll stay around for all of that. Many of us have heard the Christmas story from Luke 2 verses 1 through 20 since we were children. And yet for others, the story is new and fresh and becoming more revered and relevant for them each day. 
And for all of us, it should continue to bring a fresh sense of peace and hope and joy and gratefulness, a heart of thanksgiving for our loving God and for his son, our Lord Jesus Christ, every time it's heard and every time it's read. Well, we've heard it sung and spoken in a, in a variety of forms over the years, coming from a variety of characters, uh, parents, grandparents, relatives of all sorts, pastoral readings, choir renditions. We've heard children reading the story with different children taking different parts and playing different roles in Christmas and Christmas Eve presentations. Some of us have been shepherds, angels, maybe Mary or Joseph. Perhaps a few of us might even lay claim to have been a, being a sheep or a shepherd or an angel or even a wise man. As much as all that is true, I'm sure I've never heard the Luke 2 Christmas story read to us from our own church children online, and I'm looking forward to it. I hope you are as well. And children, thanks to each of you who took part and to your parents for encouraging you to do that. I hope you all had fun recording the readings. And I hope that you are all, as all of us should be, reminded of the precious truths of Scripture on just how much God loves each and every one, not just at Christmas, but all year round. Here's Luke 2. And now, the Christmas story. In those days, the decree went out in Caesar Augustus, all the world should be registered. This was the first registration of when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be registered. And they each went to his hometown. And Joseph also went up from Galilee to, from his hometown Nazareth to Judea and to the city of David, which was called Bethlehem, because he was part of the house and the lineage of David. To be registered with Mary, his betrothed, and was with child. While they were there, the time came to give birth. And her own son. And she wrapped him in cloth. Wrapped him in cloth. And laid him in a manger. Laid him in a bathtub. Because there was no room for them in the inn. Because there was no room in the out. In the same region, for shepherds watching out over their flocks by night. At their farm at night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. But the angel reassured them, Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you the most joyful news ever announced, and it is for everyone, the Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born tonight in Bethlehem. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. So it was when the angel had gone away from them into the heavens, the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass that the Lord has made known to us. And... When with haste and for Mary and Joseph and <coughs> the baby lying in the manger. After seeing them, they reported the message they were told about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them.
And Mary treasured up all these things and pummeled them in her heart. Then the shepherds went back again to the fields and flocks, praising God for the visit of the angels. And because they had seen a child there, just as the angel has told them. Adding, say, Luke 2, 1 to 20. That really is the reason for the season. God sending Jesus to earth. Not the presents under the tree, not the hot chocolate and candy, not the decorations and lights, not even the family get-togethers that we love and miss. It's Jesus. We hope that this year, each one of you can really remember that Jesus is the one who brings us hope, love, joy, and peace at Christmas time and all year long. Thanks for watching our FFBC for Kids Advent series. FFBC for Kids will be taking a little break, but will return in January with Back to Sunday School. See you then! Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, round yon virgin mother and child. For God so loved the world that he sent, and we ask ourselves, what? What did he send? Well, he sent his only son, as has just been explained in, in our kids' video there. God sends Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus comes as a babe. He grows up as a child. He lives as a man. He preaches with authority, and he dies on the cross taking the punishment for our sins, for the sins of the world. This is the reason that he was sent, to proclaim the kingdom of God and to buy back a world enslaved by sin. Jesus, sent from God at Christmas, shows us how to live and offers us forgiveness of our sins. And if you want to know even more about who Jesus was, uh, who he is for us, why don't you watch our sermon from this last Sunday? Pastor Dan walked through how Jesus is our Savior, our Shepherd, our Song, our Sovereign, our Sufficiency, and so much more. You can go and take a look at that video. Ultimately, we recognize that God sends his Son 
to be fully God, to be fully man. He's sinless. He lives the perfect life. And so he's the perfect substitute for our sins. God sent his son not just to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Jesus is sent from the Father to atone for sinful man. And at Christmas, we see just the lengths that he went to in sending his son. He came as a babe. He grew up as one of us. And that certainly makes this Christmas, the one that he came on, the one that we're reflecting on, like no other. No other Christmas had God coming down as a man.
For God so loved the world that he sent his only son, that whoever believes in him. The wonderful news of scripture is that we haven't been abandoned in our sin, and Christmas shows us that so clearly. And John 1.12 reminds us that salvation is available to all, to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, the name of Jesus. He gave the right to become children of God. Romans 10.9 says, If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. No other conditions need to be met. There's no standard to achieve because we couldn't achieve it. The reality is that our sin has separated, from, separated us from God. There's nothing we can do to bridge that gap between us. We had to, we, the wages of our sin is death. And if we've sinned, then we deserve that death. But Jesus never sinned. So he never deserved death. If anyone earned heaven with God, it was Jesus. And then he substituted himself for you. This is how much God loves the world. He sends his son to die that whoever now believes in him, believes in his sacrifice, believes uh, in his perfect shed blood on the cross, can be forgiven, can be restored to a relationship with God. It doesn't matter what you've done. Look at what God did for you. He sent his son that whoever believes in him This is the lengths that God has gone to to redeem you from your sin. If we think about it for a second, he came to earth as a baby. He smelled the smells of a stable. He heard the harsh cries of the animals. He felt the rough, scratchy cloth and the manger as he was laid in it. He saw with his human eyes the brokenness of this world. All of these things he endured for us. And as he grew up, He smelled smells that we can't even imagine in our clean, sanitary North America. He heard the harsh cries of those who were yelling, crucify, crucify. He felt the pain of the whip and the nails as he was crucified on the cross. He saw the evilness, the hatred, the depravity of mankind firsthand. And he did all of this so that his creation could be restored. It began at Christmas, the message that all could come to God.
For God so loved the world that he sent his only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. The wages of our sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. The destiny of those who do not believe in Christ is hell. But for those who do believe in Christ, it's eternal reward in heaven. And it's eternal life but it's also eternal joy, it's eternal hope, it's eternal peace, it's eternal love. All of these things are available for you and for me because of Jesus, because of Christmas. You and I don't have to live under the burden of past mistakes, under the condemnation of our own failures, under the slavery to sinful, wicked desires, under the weight of guilt. We can be free free to live as we ought, free to not sin, free to have joy, free to have hope, to have peace, no matter the circumstances. We can be free from worry. We can be free from anxiety. All of these things come because of Christmas. That's what it's all about. It's the beginning of God's salvation plan. Christmas is from God, showing his, us his love, by actively sending salvation to us in the form of his son, Jesus, so that all mankind can be forgiven of their sins and saved unto heaven, granted eternal life with God. That's why we celebrate Christmas. 
That's why this first Christmas is so unique. It was a Christmas like no other. And if you're watching this video hoping, looking for hope in the midst of a time where it seems so hard to find, if you're watching this video looking for joy in a difficult, maybe lonely holiday season, if you're watching this video longing for love because you can't be with family and friends, if you're watching this video seeking peace in a turbulent time, know that it's available in Jesus for those who believe. If you've never put your faith in Jesus, in his sacrifice for your sins, now is the best time to do it. Why not make this the the best Christmas ever by making the best choice you could ever make? It just takes belief in Jesus and what he's done. We'd love to hear from you if, if you're interested in that. And uh, we'll talk with you about what that means, what a life devoted to Jesus looks like. It's hard, but it's worth it. For those in our church family or elsewhere who have heard and accepted the gospel already, well, this Christmas season, we get to live it out. We get to actively, tangibly show the world through our attitudes and our actions this holiday season that our joy, our hope, our love, our peace are found in Jesus alone. And so even though things look a little different this year, and this has been and will continue to be for the rest of it, a Christmas Eve service like no other, hopefully, we're really hoping this doesn't look similar next year. Otherwise, my whole theme this year will be broken. So although things look a little different this year, We can, because of that first Christmas like no other, honestly and truly wish you a full, merry Christmas. The fullness of this season is not in the wrapping paper. It's not in the decorations on the tree. It's not in the sparkling lights outside. It's not even in the food that we eat and the family get-togethers. The fullness of this season is available to you in Jesus Christ. Merry Christmas. God bless.
As we come to the end of our Christmas Eve service, we want to close in prayer. We want to bring our requests before the Lord as the year comes to a close and as our service comes to a close. Some of the things that are on our heart. And I find it helpful at times sometimes to write those things down, which is what I've done tonight. And I would ask that you would follow as I read this prayer for all of us on this Christmas Eve. Dear gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we come today asking that you would help us to remember the birth of Jesus in ways that would please you. We want to share in the song of the angels and to sing the song of the redeemed of all ages that you are worthy. We desire to rejoice at the good news as the shepherds received it and to share that good news of our Savior with those who need to know. We ask that our hearts would be warmed and humbled by news from heaven, as were the hearts of Mary and Joseph at the announcement of Jesus' birth. We seek to worship our Savior as the wise men of long ago and to love you with all of our hearts and our souls and our strength. Deliver and protect us these days from the evil that surrounds us, from the spirit of this age that would cause us to despair, to doubt, to be discouraged, and even downcast. Take away our bent to sinning, our fear of the future, and our lack of faith. And may we find renewed strength in the Christ of the Christmas story and of God's love for the world. Raise our spirits and our thoughts to your glorious throne. Teach us to be joyful and happy as your children. And may we rest our heads on our pillows each night with thankful hearts. That as people who have been forgiven through our Savior Jesus Christ, we too can forgive others. And that our future is safe and secure in the promises of God. We ask today for the salvation of our family members and friends who still seek satisfaction and fulfillment in the things of this world. For salvation is to be found in no other name under heaven save Jesus. We pray that there would be bread on the table of all today who are hungry. We pray for a cup of cold water for those who are thirsty, wherever they may be. We pray that there would be a tangible expression of love today for the unlovable, and we pray that your hand of healing for those who are sick and in need of compassion would be felt. We pray that your spirit's guidance and wisdom for our, we pray for your spirit's guidance and wisdom for our young people and protection for our children from those who would seek to harm them. We pray for the persecuted church around the world today. We pray for unwavering faith for the Christians under persecution. We pray for the unsaved who persecute them, that they would see the light of the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. We pray that in the midst of these difficult days, your church family would have courage and resolve to remain faithful. We pray that there would be a time of peace for each of them, and that they could too pause and praise for you for your Savior this Christmas. And as Samuel prayed for Israel, be it far from me that I should sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray for you. May we take that on as a challenge for ourselves. Remind us often to pray for those who are in prison, as though in prison with them, and for those who are mistreated, since we are also of the same body. We pray, Lord, for our own church family, our own faith fellowship, and we would ask that you would help us to be a good witness in this city, that we would have as a church and as individuals more opportunities in 20 and 21 to share your gospel message, and to love the people of Brandon. We pray that you would help us to demonstrate your desire that we would be bright lights in this city of darkness. We would ask that you would help us to live out the truth of what it means to be a disciple of Jesus Christ, to be united in purpose, strong in character, and resolved to do your will no matter what the cost. And as Jeremiah encouraged the people of God in Babylon to pray for that city, so we too pray for the blessings of God upon Brandon, Manitoba. We thank you, Father, for the child who was born and for the son who was given. Thank you for the gift of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, our Emmanuel, the Word made flesh. Thank you for your love that never changes and never fades away and that will never end. For we know and are convinced that one day, Every knee will bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Thank you for good news, the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen. And as we close, let me remind you now to stay 
and to stay and listen to all the greetings that have come to us from both our church family and from our mission family. And may God bless you all. Have a wonderful Christmas. And we look forward to seeing you again tomorrow morning or at some point tomorrow because there's more music and more testimonies to come. In Jesus, we ask that he would bless you in his name. Amen. Hi, this is Lorna. I'm just wishing everybody a really warm, comfortable family Christmas this year. And uh, love all of you. Merry Christmas to our brothers and sisters in Christ. And we'll see you all when the, when the COVID's over. Hey, Merry Christmas, church family. We miss you, and uh, it's good to see you this way anyway. And remember, wise men still seek him. From Marg and Jerry. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas to, to all. We, we miss, miss you. you. I just want to say Merry Christmas to my church family. Hello, FFBC family. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. May your upcoming year be filled with great joy, peace, and love. Bye. Bye. This is the Cavies, Pastor Dan, Sharon, and Michael. Joy to the world. The Lord has come. Let earth receive her king. Wishing you all a Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> we wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a happy first day to Jesus. The tidings we bring to you and your kin. The tidings of Christmas and a happy... Happy birthday to Jesus. Je te souhaite un Noël, ti merci un joyeux Noël, on se souhaite un joyeux Noël et un très bon année. Merry Christmas, everyone, and may the peace of Christ be with you this holiday season. And in the words of Tiny Tim many years ago, God bless us all, each and every one. Merry Christmas to all, and to all a good night. <laughs> Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas, everyone. Hey there, church family. We just want to say we miss you, we love you, and we hope that you have a great Christmas season celebrating the birth of Jesus, because uh, he truly is the reason for the season. I just say Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everyone. Claire has something she'd like to say. I'm going to share some Christmas reminders that I found, and I really like them. May the Christmas presents remind you of God's uh, greatest gift, His only begotten Son. May the Christmas candles remind you of Him who is the light of the world. May the Christmas tree remind you of another tree on which he died for you. May the Christmas cheer remind you of him who said, be of good cheer. May the Christmas feast remind you of him who is the bread of life. May the Christmas snow remind you of the cleansing power of Christ. And may the Christmas bells remind you of the glorious proclamation of his birth. May the Christmas carols remind you of the glad tidings which we are to proclaim to all. And may this Christmas season remind you in every way of Jesus Christ, your King. Doesn't say anything about the Christmas turkey in there, but it'll be okay when we get back together. Merry Christmas to all from Jerry and Claire. Greetings, friends at Faith Fellowship Baptist Church. Merry Christmas from our home to yours. As we think about the birth of our Lord Jesus this Christmas, we think about the final stanza of that well-loved Christmas carol, Joy to the World. It goes like this. He rules the world with truth and grace. And makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love. 
the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love. Merry Christmas. Christmas is a time for peace and hope, as described in Romans 5, 1 and 2. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into his grace in which we now stand, and we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. We want to wish you a Christmas and New Year filled with joy, peace, and true hope that comes from knowing Jesus Christ, our Savior. Feliz Navidad y prospero año y felicidad. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. We hope that you are all keeping safe and that 2021 will be a much better year than 2020. May the Lord bless you. Hi, we're Bruce and Brenda Taylor, your missionaries to Ireland. Which in Irish means have a happy Christmas. To you all. Thank you so much for all your prayers and support this year. We wish you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Hi, we're Doug and Phyllis Trick with Wycliffe Bible Translators. To all of you, our dear friends at Faith Fellowship, we love you, we miss you, and we wish each one of you a Merry Christmas and a Blessed New Year. Sleep in heavenly peace.